All right, good morning, everyone. I'm sure glad you're here today. I don't think I saw any first-time visitors, but uh, we have some folks visiting because of uh, uh, visiting family from out of town and things, so we're glad that you're here today with us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and ask as you, uh, you stand with us right now, and we're going to sing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. thank you for this day that you have made, Lord, and then pray we just rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We just thank you for just your love and your grace and your mercy, Lord, how you've saved us and how you loved us so much, Lord, that even though we were unworthy, you sent your son to die for us, Lord, so that we can have everlasting life through his name. And Lord, I pray you just uh, be with our service. I pray that everything just brings you honor and glory from even every thought, Lord, from every word that is spoken would just magnify Christ, Lord, and lift you up. And Lord, we pray you be with Pastor as he preaches. I pray you just give him power from the Holy Spirit, Lord, and to preach what you want him to say, Lord. And I pray that we all be changed closer to the image of your son through the preaching of your word. And Lord, if someone here is not saved, they've never called on you for salvation. Lord, I pray you just um, convict them of their need for a savior. Just convict them that they are sinners, Lord, in need of a savior, and give them the courage to call upon you. And Lord, we will give you um, all the honor and all the glory. We thank you for everything you've done, and we thank you for that which you continue to do. We pray for these things in your son's name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> all right. Our next song that we're going to sing this morning, How Can It Be? Oh, Savior, as my eyes behold the wonders of Thou hast made, and yet to think thou lovest me, my heart cries out, How can it be? How can it be? How can it be, can it be that God should love? Precious bleeding for my cruel nail, so bruised and torn. To know thy suffering was for me, in grief I cry, how can it be? How can it be? How can it be, can it be that? God should love us all like me. Oh. 
So just a couple quick announcements for the teenagers. First of all, coming up this coming this coming up Saturday is our next blaster rally. We are leaving at 10 a.m. It's going to be down in Winnemac, and we ask that everyone bring a lawn chair as it's going to be out um, on a farm there. And also, we should be getting back probably around 2:30, 3 o'clock our time. I will text uh, the parents when we are headed back. And also, coming up on September 13th, uh, Tuesday is our Bible study. We will be Girls will be doing attributes of God. And boys will be going through Proverbs. And due to, with the counseling ministry, we are going to be moving uh, <coughs> the Bible study. We did it Thursday last year. We will be moving it to Tuesday this year so that the building is free for the counseling class. And uh, we will have a light snack um, for the teenagers. And we ask that uh, for the girls was to bring a notebook and their Bible. And for the boys to bring all they need is their Bible and a pen. So those are my announcements. I'll give it to Pastor. All right, let me just remind you a few things that are happening this week. Again, uh, tomorrow night is Faith Bible Institute. I know it's Labor Day, but we still have class. Uh, if you want to do that this afternoon, you can do it this afternoon, but if you didn't come prepared for that, you're probably not ready for that. Uh, you can do it online. You can make it up one day this week, but if you are, well, we are planning from 6 till 9 again tomorrow night. If you have any questions, you can see Miss Misty about that. Wednesdays, again, at 1 o'clock at, at uh, Big B Coffee. The ladies have a fellowship time there. I encourage, again, all ladies, if you're interested, 1 o'clock uh, to have coffee. You can bring your children if you need to. Uh, September 7th, this Wednesday, is our, our Wednesday night prayer meeting, Bible study, and Kids Club will be starting back up again this Wednesday. Also this Wednesday, we do have a new uh, Bible study class called the Rubies. It's for the ladies 20 to 35. They'll be meeting over here, uh, the room that's on the right as you head to the teen room. Uh, so if you're interested in that, that class is available. Uh, September the 8th is our counseling ministry begins. I uh, encourage you to be spreading the word about that. Uh, we do have it on the sign out there. There are uh, flyers at the Welcome Center if you're interested in handing those out. Uh, Pastor Pendle would like to meet with all those who have been through the counselor training this morning. Uh, after the morning service, if you'll have a few minutes, he'd like to go over some things with you as we gear up for that ministry. September 17th is the hunter safety class at, in, in Liberty. Again, in North Liberty, remember you need to uh, register online for that. Uh, Brother John will give some more details, but right now it looks like you'll have to leave here at 6 o'clock uh, on Saturday morning, the 17th, because they're an hour ahead of us and it starts at 8 o'clock and it takes about 45 minutes to get there. So if you would uh, and are interested in that, again, we'll leave here at 6 and then, but if you have any questions, see Brother John about that. September 17th also is a church worker seminar. Are. Again, you can still sign up for that. Uh, the early bird discount is passed, uh, but there's some flyers at the Welcome Center. I encourage you to look that over. They have a lot of classes that they're offering uh, for a workers' seminar. If you have some ministry here at the church, again, they, they provide things there to help encourage you in that ministry and help teach you some other aspects about that ministry. September 24th will be our Crow Fest, the Fall Festival, out at the Crows from noon until 2. Uh, you bring a dish to pass. The church will provide the hot dogs and sausage for that. Again, we're looking forward to having a couple of our missionaries there with us as well because the 25th through the 28th will be our missions conference. Looking forward to that. Excited about that. There's a lot going on. There's a lot that's already been done by Brother Chris. But if you'd like to help out with the missions conference, if we're going to have a meeting next week, Sunday morning, after the morning service right down front here. Uh, we need cookies that need to be made, some other things, but Brother Chris will go over all that with you if you'd like to help out. And again, it doesn't have to be just the adults. Teenagers can help out too if they would like to do that. 
Remember that is September 25th through the 28th. And then October 7th and 8th is the ladies' retreat at Camp Kobiak. Uh, those registrations need to be in today because there is no more room. Okay, uh, so those that have already been uh, said they were going and been made aware of, you need to fill out those registrations. They need to be sent in. Uh, they are full to capacity at Kobiak this year. Okay. I think that's everything for now. If we can have the ushers come, we'll go ahead and take up the morning offering. All right. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, again, we do thank you for loving us. Again, so thankful, Father, that you planned to set aside a day that we might just solely think upon you and worship you. And, Father, we do pray again that uh, you'd be honored and glorified in all that takes place today. Again, help us in the aspect of worship. But right now, Father, as we give, I pray that we give out of a heart of love for you. And again, Father, we, that we would take the tithes and offerings and use them for the furtherance of the gospel. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
right, if you're able to stand, would you join me in standing as we sing our next congregational? This will be a medley, so we'll go from the first song and then we'll go right into our second song. Be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care Not my final home. 
but until then, then my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day God calls me. things of earth that cause our hearts to tremble, remember there will only bring a smile. But until then, my heart will go on singing, until then, with joy I'll carry Mrs. Crow, you, if you are four years old up through the sixth grade, you can be dismissed for Children's Church at this time, four years old up through the sixth grade. Until then. Yes, God has things for us to do until then. We know and we anticipate how great heaven will be, but until then, we have responsibilities. In the scriptures in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, we read, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. If you're here today without Christ as your Savior, Jesus Christ came to the earth, suffered, took upon Him your sin and my sin and the sin of the whole world. He died for you and I that you might have salvation, that you might one day have a place in heaven. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we read, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are not the same person once Christ has saved you. He changes you. In John chapter 10, the second part of verse 10, it says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Boy, what a great verse that is. What a great challenge that is to you and I. God has given us life that we might have it more abundantly. God longs to save us, change us, and to give us an abundant life. Recently, we looked at Luke chapter 5 in a message titled, Wanting God to Show Up. If you would permit, I would like to look at another aspect from that same passage of Scripture entitled, Wanting More Out of Life. What we look at this time will be an opportunity to have a life beyond measure, that aspect of abundant life beyond measure. In other words, an opportunity to go from an ordinary life to have an extraordinary life. If you'll take time and look at Luke chapter 5 this morning, Luke chapter 5, give you a moment there to find that Luke chapter 5, a familiar passage to most people who've been in church any length of time. But again, as the great thing about God's Word is you can look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, and God still teaches you things. Amen. And as I was reading this recently, God laid upon my heart again. I know we just looked at this passage, wanting God to show up, but there's more here then meets the eye. And I would like to really challenge you this morning to uh, desire to have that abundant life. Let's begin by reading verse number 4 of Luke chapter 5. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net brake. 
And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. When they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. This first aspect we're looking at is the ordinary life. Now, this is not necessarily talking about a sinful life, folks. It just means the routine way of doing things, the routine way of living. Okay? We all have lives that we are living and things that we do, and, and that's a part of life. That's not a problem. But sometimes you ask yourself, is there more to it than just this? The ordinary life. Let's look at some things here first with that before we look at the next aspect. Doing things in our own strength. That's everyday life, is it not? Look at here, it says again in verse number 5, And Simon answered, said unto Master, notice this, the very first thing he says unto Jesus, We. We. That describes many of us, if we'll be honest. That's how we approach every single day when we wake up. We. In our own strength, we'll go about our business. Going to work doing chores around the house, going to school, whatever it may be. Not a moment's thought, do I need God for the day? And I'm not saying, again, you intentionally do it. I'm just, it's just what we do. You know, we have our alarm clock set. It goes off. We jump up out of bed. We get dressed. We eat food. We take off for work or set up to do chores for the day or go off to school. Just everyday routine things. But you know what? We do them in our own strength. What does the scripture tell us? For without me, ye can do nothing. Oh, sure, we can make it to work. We can get our jobs done. We can do our schoolwork. We can play our sport, whatever it may be. But you know what? Who's helping you to do that? It's God that helps us to do that. But we do it in our own strength. Now, again, the problem with that is we're missing out on the extraordinary life. We'll look at that again in just a moment. We'll come back to that. The other thing we see here is the idea of putting forth great strife. Verse number five says, we have toiled all night. We have toiled all night. You have worked hard all day. You have worked hard all night. Again, in your own strength. Again, this is not Peter's first time fishing. Or the other men, it's not their first time. They've been fishing for many years. And they have worked very hard at it. Again, we think that if we work hard enough, we'll get the things we need. We'll get the things we want. We'll get the things we desire. Well, you know what? You may go ahead and get that. And that kind of brings us to the next thing of this ordinary life. Are you willing to settle for ordinary life? Notice what it says here. And we have taken nothing. What does it mean to settle? The idea there is to sink to the bottom as sediment. When we do things in our own strength, when we go about the ordinary life, ordinary life without thinking about God, that's what we're doing, folks. We are settling. We're taking what good may come, what bad may come. It's, it's just the way it is. There are going to be days of success and days where there's going to be sorrow. They have taken nothing. Even though they have worked hard all day long, they have taken nothing. And you know what? Ah, that's business. That's life. Now, there's some truth to that. I get that, okay? Uh, if we're using the, the illustration here of fishing as they were doing, sometimes you can catch a lot of fish, and there's some days where you don't catch a lot of fish, okay? But wouldn't it be great if you caught fish all the time? See, the extraordinary life is that. It's all the time. The ordinary life, again, the, day, the daily routines of things that we have to do, I get. But we need to come to the point where we realize we don't have to do them in our own strength. And yes, it may be a struggle and a toil all day long, but we don't have to just settle. Now, I'm not up here to give you some power of positive thinking type message, but I am trying to encourage you that there is more. And God would have us to have more. Again, John 10, 10, the second part says, I have come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. That's not just talking about heaven, folks. It's talking about right here on earth and everything that God wants to do and wants to bless us with. Amen. Amen. The abundant life. 
Notice some things here as we look at this, uh, this abundant life, this beyond measure. Okay? In other words, God gives us an overflow of blessings. Looking at verse number 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Not just a good catch, but a great catch. A multitude of fishes. This is what God does. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. You know, and let's just think about it. If you were Peter, and you had toiled all night, and you have taken nothing, and God tells you, hey, it's time to go out there, and it's going to catch some fish. Well, this is not my first fishing trip. Okay? We were just there. We picked the perfect time of the day to fish. They haven't caught anything. And now you're telling me, let's go fishing. So, you know, let's think. Is Peter really thinking, we're going to catch some fish? If it was me, if it was you, you're probably thinking, I'm wasting my time. I've just been out there. I don't want to row out there again because the day before boat motors, all right? But you're rowing out there. But you know what? They go out there. They don't catch some fish. They catch a great amount of fish. An enormous, beyond what Peter could even fathom. He probably would have been excited if they'd brought a half a net full. Maybe if they just caught 10 fish, he'd have been excited. But it was a multitude of fishes. Amen. That's what God does, folks. He does exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. That's the extraordinary life. Is that what we want? Is that what we desire? Now, before you start thinking, well, you know, the extraordinary life's not what it's all cracked up to be. Look, I'm not promising you that there aren't trials and there are not struggles. Even here, even here, look at it. I think we read this over and we don't think about, all we think about is the great number of fishes, but there were obstacles along with these blessings that God gives. Notice what we see here in verse number 6. A great multitude of fishes and their what? Their net break. Yeah. Wait a minute here, okay? Uh, do I have money to go and mend another net or to buy a new one? Yet God blesses them beyond measure to the point where their net begins to break. Does that sound like a good time to you? What would you be focusing on about now? i got to replace that net. Not thinking about the great multitudes of fishes. I mean, you have worked hard all single night and done, caught nothing. God tells you all you do is throw your net over the boat, and you catch the greatest amount of fish you've ever caught before in your life. But all you can think about is, i got to fix the net. i got to fix the net. But it doesn't stop there. In verse 7, what does it say? They call their friends over and put it on a second boat, and both ships begin to sink. Well, does that sound like fun? Man, now, now, I definitely don't want to lose my boat. I mean, a net is one thing. A boat's another. I understand that uh, Bass Lake last week had a, had a uh, huge, we all had a storm, but apparently at Bass Lake, there's a couple pontoons that were flipped over upside down in the lake. That's some serious wind. Those are people who got to do something about their boats. Does anybody want to lose a boat? Does anybody want to lose their life? Look, here are, just because God blesses and he blesses in a great way doesn't mean there aren't obstacles, folks. But again, what's your mindset? What's Peter's mindset? What's John's mindset? Are they concerned about the net? Are they concerned about the boat? Or are they overjoyed with the blessings? So you see, God can do great things, and God does do great things, but sometimes people just choose to look at all the negative aspects. It's very easy to do, folks. You know, I'll I'll be honest. I'm sitting up here today, and I'm or standing up here, not sitting. I'm standing up here today, I'm looking out. You know, there's there's a few gaps here and there. And I could be thinking about all the people that are not here today. But you know what? I should be thinking about how thankful I am for all people that are here today. Because you know what? I could be preaching to five people in church. And we have way more than five people. But that's how we are. When God blesses, all we're looking at is all the negative aspects, all the obstacles, all the problems that come. And folks, there are problems that come with blessings of God. Maybe sometimes God chooses not to give us so many blessings because we can't handle the problems that come with it. Again, the idea of God blessing us isn't so we focus on the problems, but rather on his goodness. 
If the same God who has blessed us abundantly, do you not think he can take care of our problems? Most certainly. Even the problems that arise. Maybe during those problems, God chooses to bless us even more by showing us this or showing us that. But that's a part of the extraordinary life. Here's another thing we see about the extraordinary life. Others will be blessed. In verse number 7, he says, And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship. Look, God blesses us over and abundantly, not just for you, but for others. You know that you ever think about that God has blessed you so that you might be in turn be a blessing to somebody else? Sometimes we look at it this way. God has blessed me because I've deserved it. I have been faithful. I have been spiritual. I have done this. I'm somebody, so I deserve to be blessed. Well, maybe God just chooses to bless you to help meet somebody else's needs. You ever think about that? And I know that there are some people who do just that. They, God has blessed them, and they do their best to help meet others' needs. Here again, we see that, that Peter doesn't just say, well, hey, this is, this is my boat. This is my net. These are my fish. No, he has friends. And he has partners in, in, his, uh, in his fishing industry. And he says, hey, look what God has done for us. Look at all the fish that he has provided for us. Do you teach your children that, Mom and Dad? When God blesses you, do you tell them that this is the hand of God at work? God is providing the blessings. It's not just mom and dad's hard work. It's the fact that God has chosen to bless our family. Amen. Children need to know that. Yeah. Amen. Because it's very easy for us to work hard, folks. And there's nothing wrong with working hard. We ought to work hard. But it's easy for us to, to uh, uh, take the credit for our efforts rather than give honor to God for what he has done. And really, that's the whole point here. If you look at verse number 9, where it says this, For he was astonished. Not only was Peter astonished, but what? And all that were with him. Why? An overwhelming opportunity to give glory to God. And again, folks, that's what life's about. Whether therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Let your light so shine before men, they may see your good works, and what? Glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Yes, glorify God, glorify God. That's what life's about. Yes. And you know what? This extraordinary life that we can live really is about glorifying God. Amen. Not about the amount of blessings that you receive and how that you are entitled because you're such a godly person. Yep. But it's because of God. Amen. And we ought to give Him that honor and that glory. And that's exactly what we see here again. They are amazed, they are overwhelmed, and they are telling people, look what God has done. What has God done for you? Have you shared it with anybody? Sometimes we ask people to pray for us because we're struggling about something and we want God's help and, you know, and God gives it, but seldom do we tell the people, hey, you know what? God has blessed. God has answered that prayer. Look what God has done. Very rarely do we do that. It's just normal for us to, to, to ask for prayer requests, but very seldom do we give the praise to God for answering those prayer requests. Now, we're looking at here again this aspect of an ordinary life. Peter and them just about their daily business. You and I about our daily business. But God wants us to have an abundant life, an extraordinary life. Does God just give it to Peter and them? No. It has to be their choice. The extraordinary life has to be your choice. Notice some choices that they have made here in this extraordinary life. They chose, first of all, to listen. To listen. One of the things we want our kids to do is what? Listen. What do you think God wants you to do? Listen. Look over again at verse number 4 there. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon. He said unto Peter. Verse number five says, nevertheless at thy word. Peter understood that it was God. It was Jesus himself speaking to him. How often does God want to speak to you? All the time. How often do we listen? Think about it. As you open up the scriptures and you read in your own time, what is that? It's God speaking to you. Are you listening? Are you listening? 
And we all know, we've all talked about it before, we don't always listen because sometimes we don't even remember what we read. Nobody wants, to, nobody wants to talk. Thank you, Brother Don. Okay. You know what? Uh, was, it, was it last week that uh, uh, I think my son talked about uh, the amen section deal or whatever? Okay. Yeah, I, I really I didn't know, think that you would remember that other than Brother Don probably. Uh, but uh, I thought about making up about 10 signs and passing them out so you guys would know when to say amen. But uh, I didn't do that. All right. But, but the point is this. Look, God wants to speak to us. And the problem is we aren't listening. And I'm, I'm sorry, again, the, the world has a tendency to rub off on us. The world is now looking to have their own voice and not hear the voice of God. It's been that way since the beginning of time. I get that, okay? The ignorance that we are seeing in today, the foolishness that we're seeing today in the things that are trying to be passed are contrary to what God has said. And we need to make up our minds, who are we going to listen to? Who are we going to listen to? Peter here decides that he's going to listen to the Lord. An extraordinary life begins with just that. You and I need to realize that's not what I have to say, and it's not necessarily what others have to say. Now, again, we know through the Scriptures, again, there's, it's, there's wisdom in getting counseling. I'm, we talk about that, and we're having a counseling ministry. We're not talking about that issue, okay? There's good to have counsel. But you know what? There are flat times where you know beyond any shadow of doubt what God's Word has to say, and you choose not to listen. That's the problem. Think about it. What if Peter just sat there and said, well, my experience, Lord, has taught me this. We have just fished all night. This is not the right time to go fishing. I really don't have the time or the energy to do that. Is that not how we argue with God? I have already done this. I already know the outcome of that. Well, that's the problem. You don't know the outcome. You just assume you know the outcome. You just assume this is what we have experienced before. But wait a minute. Before was what? The ordinary life. Before was doing it in your own strength, by your own sweat, and settling for the results, rather than what will God do? See, we don't know what God will do. God can do amazing things, but are we willing to listen? Notice again here, the extraordinary life chooses not only to listen, but to launch out. In verse number four, he says, you need to launch out and let down the net. Launch out. Okay, so again, here's Peter. And he's thinking about, should I just stay put, knowing what I've already done, and knowing that the results will be the same? Should I just stay put, or should I step out? That's the difference. And the decision is whose? It's Peter's. It's Peter's. Yep. Christ did not force him. He said, launch out. Do you want extraordinary life? You need to launch out. You can either stay put or you can step out. Think about people in the scriptures that we have read about who have not stayed put but have stepped out. Abraham. Abraham. Again, you and I think nothing, perhaps, of, of leaving a, a place that we were perhaps born at or whatever. But here, Abraham is called to leave his country, leave his kindred. And you know what? He stepped out. And because he stepped out, what do we do? We read about Abraham in the Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Faith chapter, because he obeyed. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They could have stayed put. They could have done the same thing that everybody else was doing, and perhaps nobody would have thought nothing of it, but they decided to step out, or probably, should I say, stand up. They did not bow the knee to some idol. Again, sometimes we need to stand up. What about uh, uh, Peter walking on the water? I mean, again, think about this. I mean, Peter could have been a fisherman, could have been through the storms, could have done everything, and nobody would have thought nothing of it. But the fact is, he didn't stay put. He stepped out. And he walked on water. That is extraordinary. Amen. He doesn't get that, though, folks, unless he steps out. Amen. Yes, sir. Peter, you have no idea what I'm about to do for you, but you're going to have to launch out. Yeah. Amen. How many of us are willing to do that? And remember, it's your decision. It's my decision. Right. It was Peter's decision. So Peter chooses to launch out, but also, what? He chooses to let down the nets. See, that, if we can go part way, doesn't mean we're going to get the blessings. Doesn't mean we're going to have the extraordinary life. 
You have to follow God all the way through. Amen. See, it was a two-part thing, wasn't it? Launch out and then let down. Launch out and then let down. Maybe, again, we're, we're willing to follow God so far, but now all of a sudden you're thinking that maybe God's going to do what? Throw fish in the boat? Uh, maybe God's going to change his mind. Well, I was just wanted to see if you'd launch out, Peter. There really is no fish down there, so don't let down your net. I mean, is Peter thinking, do I have to go through all this work and get the fish, the, the nets all wet, bring them all back in, get them all dried out, get them all taken care of? Do I got to go through all that again for nothing? See, there's no faith on Peter's part until he follows all the way through. Right. He has the faith to let down the net. Remember, folks, this is an experienced fisherman. He lays all his experiences aside and listens to God. Now again, we're reading an awesome story about Peter and the enormous amount of fish that God has provided. But if he doesn't let down the net, we don't read that. He does not experience that. How much are we missing out on, folks, because we don't follow God all the way? We do part of what he says and not all of what he says. That describes most of the Christian life, does it not? Well, I, I'll listen to, the, that, that, that makes sense to me. Well, that there, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Certainly there must be a place in that spot there for liberty. I must be able to do what I want to do. And again, even the aspect of liberty, folks, remember this. It's not about doing what you want to do. It's about doing what God wants you to do. Amen. That's the aspect of liberty. Amen. Notice a couple other things here will be done this, this morning. The extraordinary life also chooses to leave all. Notice what it says in verse number 11 there. And it says, And when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all. They forsook all. The idea here, anything that would cause them to go back to the ordinary way of life, the ordinary way of living, they're to put that behind them. It's time to make a change. And folks, that's what Christianity needs today. It's time to make a change. A change from what? A change from doing things the old way and start doing things God's way. The old way, I'm talking about our old nature. Again, remember, God saved us to make us a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, you know what? I think sometimes we realize because, oh yes, I believe in salvation according to scriptures, but that's an awful old book. Certainly God doesn't mean for us to do this. Certainly God doesn't mean for us to do that. Look, what's going to cause you to stumble? What's going to hurt you? is going back to the old way of life, Amen. the old way of living. That's right. And God would have us to have more than that. Look, for, the, for Peter and them, they had to leave it all behind. Now, b before we, 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 we uh, look at Peter and them as being perfect, they're not. Remember when, when Christ uh, was buried in the tomb? Where did they go? They went back to the fishing boats. Everybody struggles. Everybody has times of difficulty. Look, God doesn't want us to, 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 to make wrong choices even when things are not going good. Are we willing to leave all that will cause us or hinder us from having the extraordinary life? And the last thing we see there is what the extraordinary life chooses to live for God, and they followed him. They followed him. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. The extraordinary life is not living for self. It's living for God. Amen. And again, I, I, just being honest with you, most of Christianity does not see that. <coughs> They're just stuck in the ordinary life. And again, I'm not saying sinful life, folks. I'm saying ordinary life. But the extraordinary life is a choice. Yeah. The extraordinary life, again, is living for God. Living for God, again, look, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day and the next week and the next month and the next year and the next year. All our days. See, the problem is, again, we're, we're good at living for God perhaps for, for the moment. Perhaps right now you're, you're thinking about things of God. Perhaps there's a verse that God has brought to your mind. Maybe there's a time where God does something wonderful for you, and it's in your mind at this point in time. But what about tomorrow? God's the furthest thing from most of our minds tomorrow. 
Again, God says, I have given them life that they might have it. I've come to give life that they might have life more abundantly, beyond measure. This extraordinary life God would have for his children today, for those who know Christ as their Savior. But the choice is ours. So let me conclude this morning by reading three scripture passages, just as we began looking at three different scripture passages. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that mean to you and I? The same God who blessed Peter and others abundantly is the same God we serve today. Just because we aren't physically walking with Christ doesn't mean that he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't mean that he is limited in his powers and his abilities to do great things. Again, I think sometimes we we get caught up in the fact that, well, the God of the Bible is not the God of today. But he is. He's the same. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition. Why do we have God's word? That we might see all that God has done for people. To nurture us and to challenge us and to have confidence in God that, hey, that's the same God that I serve today. Amen. Again, I, these are not just stories that, that may be true or not true. They're true. Everything, let God be true and every man a liar. God has never lied to his people. He will not begin now. Amen. Psalm 25, verse 12 says, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. He that feareth the Lord. Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. What life do you choose? The ordinary life or the extraordinary life? God has offered us a life more abundantly, but it is our choice. Do you want more out of life? How can I get more out of life? Well, first and foremost, again, you need to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I don't know where you stand. God does not give, give pastors or any other person in the church, by that, for your information there, uh, the ability to see salvation. Who has and who has not? Now, we can look at people's lives and fruit, and we can make an assumption that that person seems to have the fruit of the Spirit. Needs to be living a life, seems to be living a life for God. But in reality, I can't see that. But God sees that. God knows whether or not you're truly saved or you just go through the motions. It could be a person who's first time in church today or somebody who's been their whole life. See, the problem, again, oftentimes with people who are raised in church is they know what to say. They know what they ought to do. Why well, I ought to trust Christ as my Savior. And perhaps one day they even walked an aisle because everybody else was walking the aisle and they wanted to make their mom and dad happy or the pastor happy or whatever. But you have never really trusted Christ as their Savior. You can never have an extraordinary life apart from Jesus Christ. You can't. Not only will you never get to experience heaven, you don't get to experience the joys that God would have for you here upon this earth even. You need to come to Christ. And again, whose voice are you listening to? Remember, God very clearly tells us, everybody, how they can be saved. <coughs> Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other name than the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon Him shall be saved. That's what God has said. The question is, are you listening? Yeah. Amen. Are you listening? Or are you listening to yourself? Well, I'm not. I don't care about that. I don't believe that. That may be for you guys, but it's not for me. Well, it is for you. Yes. It's for every person. Yes, sir. Remember? For God so loved the world. Not just certain people here at New Hope Baptist Church. But he so loved the world. Amen. That means he loves you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And maybe that's you here today. True, extraordinary life begins with you trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Why don't we go ahead and stand?